instrumentally. So I got a lot of information, so let's just get into this. Go to Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15. And I'm reading from the NASB. It may sound a little different, but it means the same thing. I promise you that it's the word of God. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 15. Amen. And what I'm dealing with now are who are the Elijahs in our time? Because we know that Elijah was a prophet that lived many years ago. But who are the Elijahs in our time? Because if there's going to be an Elijah-Elijah connection, we got to understand who are the Elijahs or the fathers in our day. Amen? Amen. And I hope this morning I'm talking to Elijahs and Elishas. I'm talking to those that have the torch and those that will be passing the torch. Amen. But it is a process in order to receive the torch. Amen? Amen? So in Jeremiah 3 and 15 it says, Then I will give you what? Shepherds after mine own what? Heart. Heart who will feed you on knowledge and understanding. And one of the things that I believe we, we do a disservice to the word of God because we never take the time to see what heart is. What is the heart of God? Yes. And so the word heart in the Hebrew is the word L-E-B-E, leb. And, and it doesn't mean the heart like what we think it is, the cardia, the beat. When God said, I will give you shepherds after my own heart, he said, that word in the Hebrew means my will. My will. I will give you shepherds after my will. My will for your life. So it's important that you allow God to place you where you need to be and you don't just show up. Because he said, I place members in the body as it pleases me. And so that's why you have to be placing God because God knows the shepherd that he has anointed with the, the heart that is for your purpose and your destiny. Yes. Are y'all tracking with me? Yes. Yes. And so I can't just go get under anybody because I like to praise and worship. Uh -huh. yeah. Or because go. they're a good hooper or because, uh -huh. you know, I just like the bathrooms. They're beautiful. I have to make sure that I connect with the leader yeah. that God has ordained for my life Amen. that has the keys to unlock the destiny that God has given me. Yes. And so when he's talking about the shepherds, that are after his heart. He's talking about the leadership that has the keys. They have God's will in their heart for your life. Yes. And they will unlock the things that needs to be unlocked in you so you can fulfill that purpose that God has for you to fill. Amen. 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 So you got to understand that word heart is not just a literal heart. We think people that have pure hearts, and that is essential to have a pure heart and do things with the right motive. But I can have a pure heart and not have a heart for your destiny. Amen. You understand that? I can, I can have the greatest intention. My character can be intact. I can be an awesome man or woman of God. But if God has not given me the will for your life, then I'm wrong yes. for you. Amen. And so that's why it's important that we understand discernment and the leading of the Holy Spirit to right. get where God has ordained us to be. Amen. And it doesn't matter how you end up there as long as you get there. Yes. Amen. Amen. All right, let's talk about Elijah. Go to 1 Kings chapter 9, 19. 1 Kings chapter 19. We're going to start at the first verse. 1 Kings 19. We're going to look at this prophet because we know through reading the Bible that Elijah is the one that closed up the heavens. He's the one that said it's not going to rain for the space of three and a half years, but only at my word will the heavens be open. Uh -huh. And we understand that this is the same man of God that called down fire from heaven yes. <laughs> and consumed the sacrifice yes. and had the prophets of Baal killed. Yes. And, and it's almost like in the next breath, this happens right here. Y'all there? First Kings 19 and 1. Now Ahab is a sign of weak leadership. Uh, Ahab yes. will never build the kingdom or anything. Ahab is the one that let other people call the shots. It's bad to have a person in a leadership position, but they let the people that's under them call the shots and yes. make the decision. Yes. That's an Ahab spirit, and that kingdom will crumble. Jesus. But I'm not talking about Ahab. Ahab told Jezebel, now you're the king, why are you telling your wife? Because she was the one that was running everything. Yeah. 
<laughs> all that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. How did he kill the prophets? Uh, it's important that you remember that. Verse 2. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, So may the gods do to me and even more if I do not make your life as the same of one of them by tomorrow at this time. I'm going to kill you by this time tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Verse 3. And when, he, and when he was afraid, he arose and ran for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah. And he left his servant. He left his mentee there because he was running. But he wasn't running for the reason we think he was running. He left him, his servant. He arose for his life. He went to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah. He left his servant, verse 4. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. Now, who runs into the wilderness? Most people trying to get out of the wilderness. Uh -huh. But when you're depressed, you are going to some places you never thought you would end up at. He ran into the wilderness and came and sat under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die. And he said, it is not enough. Now, O oh Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my father's. The Holy Spirit began to deal with me. He said, why was he running? I said, because Jezebel was going to kill him. He said, that's not why he was running. Uh, he said he had just killed that 400, I believe, prophets of Baal. He said he wasn't running because he was afraid of Jezebel. He was running because he felt helpless, because he felt uh, like he was the only one. Uh, my and sometime in leadership, when you have people that are around you with titles yes. and they're not doing what they're supposed to do, yes. you feel helpless. Yes. And sometimes you want to just close up shop and run. Uh -huh. Come on, and so he was frustrated and he was depressed and he wanted to close up shop because he felt helpless. He, he basically kept saying, I'm the only one. I'm yes. the only one. Uh -huh. Why you want to die? I'm the only one. I can't do this by yes. myself. Yes. And as a leader, you got to understand that even if you feel like you're by yourself, you still have God with you. Amen. And you still Amen. have to stand up to the plate and do what God has called you to do. That's right. And so he was running because he was depressed. And he was depressed because he didn't have sufficient help. Yes. And many times in ministries, pastors end up, they can preach an awesome sermon. Lay hands on people, cast the devil out, see the sick heal, the dead raised, and leave that ministry and go home depressed because they feel like they're the only one. Yes. Nobody else has the passion. Nobody has the conviction uh -huh. that I have. I'm doing this all by myself. Yes. And if you don't watch yourself, you will end up being a depressed preacher. Yes. And you'll be bringing other people joy, but you'll be living a miserable life Amen. because you'll feel like you're the Amen. only one. Amen. But how many know that you're not the only one? Amen. Because God God says that he have those that have not even bowed to Baal. Amen. Yes. So why was he running? He was running because he was depressed. Now I'm talking to the Elijahs now. Not the Elishas, the Elijahs. So it's important how you handle stress. Yes. It's important how you handle disappointment. Come on. It's important how you handle betrayal. Yes. Because if you don't handle these things right, you'll, you'll embrace them. Yes. And, and you'll become in, internally depressed and uh -huh. you'll be an amazement outside. Because yes. it's amazing how many people can be public successes but private failures. Yes. Oh my God. And yes. so you got to make sure that you don't put a burden on you that God didn't even put on you. Amen. He told you to obey him uh -huh. and leave the results up to him. Right. So yes. you got to you gotta learn how to handle and how to manage disappointment. And a lot yes. of people can't handle disappointment because we don't want to be disappointed. Amen. But, but as the apostle taught this morning, it goes with the training. Training for reigning. Yes. You're going to have to learn how to handle disappointment, uh -huh. betrayal, heartbreak, the yes. People that you pour the most into. Wow. Yes, 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 yes. The ones that walk away from you and talk uh -huh. about you like a dog, and the only thing you yes. did was to love them. Uh, that's it. That, that'll drive you into the wilderness. Uh -huh. Because many times the wilderness feels more safer than the church sometimes. Yes. Because Lisa, I know it's wild beasts out here. Uh -huh. But I don't know what it's in the church. You know, it's like yes. a box of chocolate. You don't know what you're going to get yes. <laughs> until you open it up. Amen. Say that about <laughs> so it's a lot of uh, verities in the church, a lot of things that we have to guard our heart against. Yes. And I found out that foundation she was talking about, that's part of being able to guard your heart. Yes. Because out of yes. it flows the issue of life. Yes. If I don't yes. deal correctly with pain, uh -huh. 
Uh-huh. Then I'm going to internalize it and then I'm going to verbalize it. Yes. And then I'm going to end up hurting people because yes. hurt people hurt, hurt people. people. And so you have to go through that process of maturity so yes. it doesn't matter what comes, you're the same. Amen. Because you Amen. understand that you're on a mission and you're doing this for God and it doesn't matter what it looks like. You just want to hear well done one day. Yes. My good and faithful servant. Uh -huh. And if you go down to verse 10, Listen to what he said. He said, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the sons of Israel have forsaken you. Your covenant torn down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword, and I alone am left, and they seek to kill me. 